check podcasts. The Bread and Butter Collective is a collection of hospitality professionals working together to help strengthen our industry to build strong culture, community, and sustainability. I'm Kalen McNeil. And I'm Sam Jones. And And this this is is the the Bread Bread and Butter Butter Podcast. Welcome to the Bread and Butter Podcast. How are you, Sam? I'm great, Caitlin. How are you doing this uh, morning? Doing good. You know, it is this morning. It's what time were you up? Six. Six. Nice. Yeah. 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 That's a good time think, to wake I mean, up. I wasn't actually out of bed, but I was awake at six. Oh man, I was up at like four this morning. Jeez. I was just up. You are. You've got a lot of spunk I, today. <laughs> It was like, oh my God, I have to prepare. We have guests. In we the do house. have guests. And, and amazing I had to wake up people. two hours earlier just to like clean, make sure that <laughs> I was looking good. You are looking good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Like You're it. looking really good too. Thank you. Well, yeah. Thank you. I think our guests are looking pretty good. They're looking fantastic. And who, who are they? Well, we have Marianne Carmack from Roast, and we have uh, Kristen. Oh my God, why am I blanking on your lot? Go, go with the easy one. Go with Dallas. Dallas. Oh my God. <laughs> so embarrassing. Kristen Dallas from Prima Strata Pizzeria. So they're members of the Bread and Butter Collective. We've been good friends for a long time. We've been collaborating and working through the pandemic together and um, just really strengthened our, our bond to peers in the industry. Um, and yeah, we've had a lot of uh, dark days and tears and support. It's been fun. <laughs> so much fun. Well, when it comes to the, the like the bread and butter collective, I think that um, yeah, there there are certain people that really make it better, and I think we have quite a few of them in the room here today. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I think we do. Yeah. Um, why don't we start with Kristen, and why don't you just introduce yourself and your business for those that don't know? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and your last name. Can you spell that? Oh, my God. I completely <laughs> blanked on it. It's okay. Um, so my name is Kristen DeCarolis. Dallas would be um, my partner, Jeffrey's last name. Oh, that's, oh, my God, even worse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can spell it later. Um, uh, Pizzeria Primastrata, a Neapolitan pizza, 15 years in the Cook Street Village, um, a location at Fort Street, a location in Cobble Hill, and... Um, uh, commissary kitchen as well and that's is that on um commissary is on bridge street where oh, bridge we used street. to that's have a pizzeria a, right. yeah, yeah we con- kind of just consolidated space and kept our operations there so meatballs pepperoni gelato tiramisu all of the other stuff that we make in-house um and, and then push out into the rooms i wonder if you'll sell us gelato at zamri's we, we're looking for a new gelato work <laughs> Huh. We should talk. Well, let's talk. Yeah. yeah. How, yeah. what a t- turn of events. That would be, that's pretty funny. That would be fun. You've yeah. got something to go fun. back to your meeting to now. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's a big wheel meeting at oh, okay. Zachary's, but yeah, I can see the people. Marianne. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Where do I start? The, where, <laughs> the where, beginning. in the beginning. <laughs> like. um, I own Roast Meat and Sandwich Shop located in the Victoria Public Market. We've been there 10 years. Um, I did have a couple locations in San Diego for a few years just before COVID and had a successful catering company to the Qualcomm network there as well. COVID happened. I decided to pick up the pieces in Victoria and move back. So we've been back since um, April 1st of 2020. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't realize that actually. Yeah. I'm born and raised yeah. in Victoria. Yeah. I'm from here, but um, we thought sunshine and freedom down there was going to be Give us some gold, a pot of gold. It's not as free as you think. It's not that free. No. Well, yeah. Chris is from the U.S. Originally. I am. I'm from yeah. California too. Yeah. 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 Very from kept going south though. Which yeah, is you're from there, right? Yeah. 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 There's a bit of a like, and this is a bit of an aside, but it's about doing business in the U.S. So I've my brother has a business in Grand Prairie, and he opened up a, a satellite location in Denver, and I always thought. You know, you hear land of the free. I go to the States all the time. Love the people. But doing business in the States is not as easy as you would think, considering how um, they claim to be free and Mm -hmm. spirited. Like It's difficult. It's very difficult. Is it permit heavy? Is that why it's difficult or just money-wise? It's very litigious. 
So depending on what industry you're in, like I don't think in the restaurant industry or hospitality, you're going to run into a ton of litigious stuff, but there still would be like, you know, burnt, like people just want to sue. Mm-hmm. So in my brother's business, you know, people were just like, oh, we're just not going to pay you. And then you're like, uh, well, you owe us a million and a half dollars. Like, what do you mean you're not going to pay us? And they were just like, oh, sue me. So it was just kind of like one, that one experience. I'm helping a restaurant tour in Las Vegas um, with their restaurant. They've got a ramen shop that they opened up and they're trying to get a liquor license. And it is like, you think our liquor, I, and I don't know whether you're, it's Nevada maybe or Cook County, whatever the, the, I think it's Cook County in Las Vegas. <laughs> um, but it's literally, they've been open five months. They still don't have a liquor license. Wow. Now I had to hire a lawyer. Wow. Wow. And it's just like, yeah, I, like, I just couldn't believe it. Like, I'm stunned. Like, because we have issues here with um, restrictive liquor licensing, and we're not very liberal when it comes to that kind of stuff. But the process, like, we can get a liquor license within a month, no problem, six weeks maybe. Like, we've done it so many times with the different locations that we've had. And it's simple. But there was, like, Mm -hmm. mind-boggling. So big disparity, which, which surprises me. Yeah, you know, being in being um, from Canada, but just having some experience with some U.S. businesses. Yeah, definitely, definitely yeah. not as as smooth as you would think it would be. No, yeah. So how, Kristen? Tell us how has it been? I want to call it post pandemic. Obviously, there's still COVID around, but um, the pandemic is over. How is business? May not maybe it doesn't feel like it's over. Like, you can't see my face, I guess. Um, yeah. No, you can. Oh, you can. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. oh. This is this is being I should, video. I should. I should work. Oh. Oh. I should work a little bit more yeah. on my game face yeah. then. Uh, I still have moments where I wish for that crystal ball that still never appeared, even during COVID. Um, I I think. I think I understand um, that the world has changed more than we thought. I think that there's that still, there's that part of my brain that was more engaged with um, the pandemic would be over and we would go back to where we were previously, obviously with some changes, but not with the significant changes. So I I don't know. I'm not an economist. It would have been, I don't, and I don't even know if I was an economist, I could have done some predictive modeling, but I sure wish I had done some predictive modeling. And like you would have been unsuccessful probably because it would have been hard to figure that out. Um, so for us, the business numbers aren't where they were pre-pandemic. Um, in, in part, um, we changed our operating hours. So instead of running seven days a week, we ran five days a week. Five days is, um, it actually seems to suit us more yeah. um, for um, where we are as a team and how we can get things done. Um, and so even when you take in, even if you said, okay, well, our revenue should be 80% of what they were, we're still not quite there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we're still we're growing back to that, I, I think. Um, you know, pe- people just changed. It's yeah. more expensive to eat out. It's the the cost of doing business is just significantly yeah. more, and that affects everybody. Yeah. Now, do you? Is all your locations are five days? All of our locations. Oh, okay. are Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So you probably have a little bit more um, life balance as far as just occupying your mind. I know it's seven day a week business, regardless of how I, often. I you're appreciate open. that. So yeah. we're closed. The rooms are closed Monday, Tuesday. Um, and that makes really great sense for those of us that work Monday through Friday in the office. Yeah. Um, it does mean that our team oh, has yeah, to really yeah. think about what yeah. they're doing as far as like, ooh, is this an emergency where I need to reach out and I need support, yeah. right? Even though we're doing a lot of empowerment and, and making those teams, well, you know, have a lot of confidence in our teams, there are occasional weekend breakthroughs, so to speak, where yeah. you're definitely on. Um, but it is really great from um, an administration side that on Monday and Tuesday we go in behind the scenes and you're not asking vendors to come in at, you know, midnight to put in new cabinetry or to paint or to do that. We just jam in everything that we need to get done on Monday, Tuesday, and and then roll into service. And that's pretty nice. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Plus the thing about it, most of the, well, I want to say 80% of the business is done on the weekends or mm-hmm. Thursday to I think Sunday. That's true. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so, you know, and I always think because we've, pivoted from five days to seven days depending on you know the business and the store the time of year or during covid same with zambri's we used to be seven days a week lunch and dinner and we sw- switched to five and then we took out lunch and then we added lunch back in so you're making these adjustments all the time and i never really thought 
that we lost 100% of the revenue for those days we closed because the people will come the days that we're open. Yeah. You know, they'll yeah. just make different choices. Yeah. But if they're thinking they want to eat, they'll probably find a time or I don't know what the number is. Maybe it's 50% of the people find a time later. So it's not a direct, if you make three grand on that day, on a Monday, you're going to lose three grand for the week. I think you're you right. Know? And yeah. I think people do, or I mean, I know we would do that. I yeah. know uh, we would yeah, be like, yeah. oh, they're closed on Monday. Then I'm going to go on Wednesday or I'm going to go on a different day yeah. because that's my, well, that's the way my brain works. I get something yeah. in my head and I, until I get that satisfaction from that meal and that experience, I'm going to keep going after it. Yeah. So I, I appreciate that. Yeah. And I wonder how many people flip. We always thought it's pizza. Yeah. Um, I mean, we think it's really great pizza, but it's pizza. So seven days yeah. a week shouldn't be a problem. We do talk about that, about how are, are we getting closer to a point where there is seasonality and can yeah. we adjust to the seasonality to, to, to just be open so that there's more access. Um, and I'm feeling like maybe we could field the team now, but this would be kind of the first year as we are, you know, year, I'm thinking of our fiscal yeah. year, but as we head into the summer already now, we would have to be thinking about and talking about how we're going to hire that team, where we're going to bring that team on yeah. so that everybody's trained so that we could roll seven because we don't have the bandwidth now to try to plug seven in. Yeah, especially if you're doing them with multi-locations. Yeah. We switched from f uh, five days to seven days in our Nanaimo store. And it was a pretty seamless switch, but it, you had to think about it. We planned it three or four months before we did it. Yeah. And hiring people and making sure everybody's okay. And even then it was a little bit clunky. And it, it's still our sales are, average sales are down per day, but trying to build up your average daily sales for the times you're open was the kind of goal and we got it up to the point. Um, but it doesn't totally transfer to those other days once you open it. I think too, I had this idea. I was really concerned about consistency and the messaging. And now <laughs> I don't know if I've thrown it out the window completely, but now it's okay. Now it could be yeah. okay. If Nanaimo's open seven yeah. and cooks open five and like, that's okay. Yeah, right? and I think before, for a long time I was like, yeah. I wanted every, I wanted there to be a consistent message, and you could rely on it, and you would know, like, I could be in Cobble Hill, and I could hit Cobble Hill, or I could be in Victoria, and know that I would hit those stores, and just know, yeah. oh, Prima Strata is always open seven days a week from twelve to nine, always. And now I'm like, well, it's what? open when it's open, when when That's when, not it. when when you can have full staff, it's open, and then if you're downtown, which I know you're, you guys are close to downtown, but Marianne, you're right downtown. Mm -hmm. You must notice a slightly different thing when we're talking about days that you can and can't be open because I know forever Victoria downtown lunch was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. And now it's probably what you're be, because people are staying home and being encouraged to stay home. How does that affect your five day a week? Yeah. So consistently before COVID, our bread and butter was Monday through Friday sales. Right. consistent Monday through Friday sales. And I didn't care about the weekend sales. That was for prep. That was for just getting ready for the next week. Um, now I'm running a business on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday sales. Monday and Friday are slowest days when they used to be our, our biggest days. So that's really like, it's difficult to manage. Um, and it, and there's just not enough people downtown. And the Monday and the Friday, they're either taking a long weekend and they're working from home. So people have changed their They've changed their routines. And that's being encouraged still, isn't it? It's still being encouraged, yeah. So it's it's really frustrating. I, I think about it all the time. How do I get more people downtown? Is it just me? And I go out and I talk to other um, business owners downtown, yeah, and they're also you. suffering. Um, and I just, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how to encourage people. I have conversations all the time, and, you know, I think, because people have changed their routines, we've become a little less social also, I've noticed. Yeah. So, you know, people in Oak Bay stay in Oak Bay. They don't want to make the trek downtown because there's a lot of negativity towards downtown. You know, there's a lot of homeless people, no parking, like all this negativity that kind of just prevents people from wanting to take the extra step to go downtown. So how do we support the small businesses down there? Yeah, I guess it's analyzing and figuring out the change. So you talk about business pre-pandemic and then you talk about the pandemic. Obviously there's, it was a gong show. Uh, then coming out of it, you're like, okay, well, you know, Kristen said, you know, our business had, isn't the same pre-pandemic. And I think every one of us could agree that that's not the case. I think there's different spark sparks of sales and different, you kind of start feeling normal 
you know, or pre, I want to call there's a new normal, of course, but the, when you compare pre pandemic with where we are now and it doesn't feel the same, mm -hmm. you know, I think there could be some good things from that too. Like, I think, you know, the fact that you can be <laughs> flexible with your opening hours and <laughs> what you know, I was going to say was through all of this and, and this could, and maybe I'm just way too optimistic or I'm grasping an optimism, but through this process, we um, we got to the end just right when the pandemic kind of was happening. We got to the end of the lifespan of our point of sale system and technology has changed and there's some yeah. really great stuff out there and there's some really great options. So we literally, when we made the change, lost a bunch of historical information. Now, if we want to dig hard yeah, for yeah. it, we can yeah. find it all, right? We, I mean, we have it yeah. all in our financials. We know yeah. what we did month by month. But if you were looking at a random specific day at a specific yeah, time. Like and how you, much pizza you sold or this. Yeah, like what yeah. does Halloween look like or what yeah. is like whatever that yeah. that is that you're trying to make a decision on. The beauty of it is you're like, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> freedom, yeah. freedom. It's gone. It's gone. It's out of here. And and so you have to sit in the the now, right? You yeah. have to make a decision more on where where this is. So, well, I can say to you, oh yeah, if we go back to 2019 and those numbers, the 2019, 2020 numbers versus where we are now and all of that. And 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 there's yeah, there's another part of it where you. It's great to have that, but how do you stay in where we are today yeah. and look at where we are today and what are those new trends and what are those new way what are those new spikes and things that we want to find, right? How I've, do you manage that your lunch business has changed dramatically, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, my business has a dinner business as well. And everyone just exits downtown at three o'clock. It's a very government town. So how how do I how do I expand? How do you catching them on their way. Yeah. Um, interesting to hear that your sales, though, are trending back up because this past year, ours are trending back down this last. So my the summer is great, but but my business does better in the winter. So come September, I'm really excited because people are downtown again and, and um, we're inside. So we're not fighting against restaurants with patios. Um, but this year, sales are down for this time of year. Yeah, interesting. And I think it's because of the interest rates and people are keeping their wallets closer to their mm -hmm. to the to their pants and um and people are freaked out about mortgage rates and um food costs has gone up. Um <laughs> I read a really scary statistic I'll share with you that says a report by insolvency firm says 52% of Canadians say they are $200 $200 away or less from not being able to pay all their bills at the end of the month. Wow. As higher interest rates and rising costs of living have stretched budgets. Hey. Wow. Yeah. That is scary. scary. But, yeah. yeah. But familiar. But it's like weird. It like you, right. you, and this is the weird era we're in where that information should concern people and it's very concerning. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you still have, I mean, Canada, not so much, but U.S. is showing really strong jobs growth still. Canada is relatively as well. Um, so it's it's weird. Like, it's a weird... Because like everybody's... Last two years, oh, there's going to be a recession. Or last year, there's going to be a recession. Six months. And you're waiting for this recession, waiting for the slowdown. I think it's slowed down a little bit. Obviously, I think our sales are down. I think we looked at it, and I think it's down around 10%. Same story year over year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've done more because we added the Langford store. Yeah. But you could kind of get lost in that. You're like, oh, you're doing well. And then you're looking, okay, well, how much, mm -hmm. you know, each store did last year at this time. And so we're down as well. Um, but I think, and I was going to mention when Kristen talked with, about what she talked about, is there is an opportunity. And I think this is about living in the moment and being where you're at and then trying to adapt because, you know, the historical data you talked about is gone. It's gone. So just, and I think that's a good way to live too in general is. Well, history's gone. It's, yeah. It's like people lot, spend a lot of time living in the past or in the future where all of the action and fun and life is in the present. And if you can, it's very, dis, you have to be very disciplined to live in the present. One, I tell a quick story. I was, did this walk every day for, I don't know, a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. Didn't remember it at the end of it. Like every day I was just like, and I remember, I don't even remember what I saw or what I looked at. So one day I decided I'm just going to be purposeful. I didn't have my phone. I was just looking at the birds and the ocean and just, and it was awesome. And I'm like, oh, let me try this again. I did, I lived in the moment for like a week, maybe 10 days. 
And it was magical. I was way less stressed. I wasn't concerned about what was happening around the world. I was just living in the moment. But that's all behind you now? <laughs> yeah, I can't even think about it because it was so long ago. This was, this was probably six years ago. And then, but I, I always, I'm conscious of the fact that I, you need to live in the moment. Like, mm -hmm. so I, I center myself. So having had done that exercise, I know what it feels like. So then when I find myself too far forward or too far back, I just try to center myself and go, okay, let me just deal with what I'm dealing with now. Try not to worry about tomorrow. Because all that anxiety and in this world of the social media and all this information and so many things you can worry about. But if you go back through history, it was different worries maybe or some of them were similar. But everybody, if you focus on, on the future and what's going to happen or what could happen, man, that's scary. Mm -hmm. But if you just look in the moment and go, how can I run my business today? What are the issues that I'm in control of? Because hope is not a plan. You can't go, I hope the sales come back. Yeah. Or I hope government changes stuff. <laughs> and hope even, is not a plan. I need a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> hope is not a hope plan. Is not a plan. Yeah. And, you know, another topic I wanted to talk about is the SIBA loans. So we're in a situation where sales are declining. We're trying to figure stuff out. The costs are rising. We're trying to navigate that. We're navigating a very tight labor market. Um, and I wouldn't even say it, it's tight. I think it's just um, medium quality. So, you know, like I'm yeah. trying to look at it Ooh, in a different way. There's so much like, to dive into you, that you, medium quality. Yeah, you got, you can <laughs> get employees. It's just they're probably not the employees you 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 want. They're not that interested in being your your employee, and it's really hard to keep it going. Mm -hmm. So I think there we can hire people. Like there's people that apply and we're getting applications. You know, there's time there where there wasn't, but it's just the quality of that relationship. I don't want to speak ill of, of employees, but it's tough. Yeah. And then now we've got the pending SIBA loan payment. So this is a subject that Sam has been looking. He was up at four in the morning <laughs> prepping for. All of his notes. Um, All my notes. I'll just read them. No, I won't. Oh. <laughs> so I, I think kind of what is everybody's situation? Let's start with Marianne as far as <laughs> are, are you even thinking about it? Are you? Um, you know, I, when I sign into my business account, it's there. I see it. Yeah. yeah Do I think yeah. about it? No. Yeah. Do I want to think about it? No. no. I took it uh, at a moment of desperation, a yeah. moment of confusion, a moment of yeah. being scared. Um, and I didn't really know much about it. I just took it because I needed it. Yeah. Um, and I don't have a way of paying it back right now. Yeah. It's just there. Like, yeah. what am I going to do? What? I mean, I, I'm, I just, I'm just trying to keep the lights on and, you know, create great food and, and, um, keep the culture of my business in a positive way. Yeah. It's so interesting it's so because hard. like for Friday, like we're, uh, I think everybody, I could probably venture to say we're all in the same boat. It's like, it's not like we can just whip off $40,000 and the, the painful thing for me is that if you don't, it's like, it's almost like a, um. And if you see the, oh, what's that? What was that game? A squid game where you literally are like, <laughs> this may be a little drastic, but you're like, if you pay the, if you can come up with 40, you save 20. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's 60K if you took the, the max out, but 20K is forgivable, but you got to come up with 40K to save 20. Like that is such a, like, it's hard to grasp the concept of that because it's, you know, like as time's ticking by, it's like the squid game. Okay, you got you know 30 <laughs> seconds, you got 20 seconds, you got 50. Okay, let me figure it out. Yeah. And if you don't, then you're just automatically taking on 20K. So when you think about like where the interest rate on that is, because ultimately you got to be able to borrow because literally that's how people are going to pay. They're going to have to borrow it so that they can save 20K because that's a, that's a third. Yeah. That's a, you know, so saving a third in effective interest or penalty or whatever you want to call it is, is, huge but why put that like i get it they gave us the money but you have some stats on on government subsidies and and when it comes to non small business sure yeah. i mean the the SIBA loans were were put put to us in a time like you said where we were scared we were worried about what was coming we didn't know how we were going to pay our suppliers or our employees 
the, that next week. Like we had no idea. Businesses were shutting down. And then we got this offer for, for the, a SIBA loan. It felt like a gift at the time, some, something we could just hold on to and like pay our staff and get out of the situation we were in. But what it wasn't, it wasn't a loan to save and re- repay back. It was a loan to keep our cash flow moving. It was a loan to help small businesses continue to employ employees who run our communities. I mean, it was it wasn't just there for business owners to get free money. It was there to give back to the communities. We were just the distribution, I think. I don't know what your numbers are like, but but you're talking about employees and that's that was that was absolutely real. And at the time that that hit us, we had a hundred employees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot. Awesome. Like right? I think yeah. about that. Like, sure. I can think about how I'm paying my mortgage because yeah. I have one, but I'm also yeah. thinking about there's a hundred people and some of them are part-time and some of them are students and some of them. And, and I don't mean by some of them. I mean, all, all of them though are, are affected by this. Yeah. All of them are affected by prima strata closing. Yeah. Or or not closing or not closing or not closing with not this closing. loan. Hundred people going, is a right? lot of people to me, and I've been a prior life worked for bigger companies with thousands of employees and all that. But a hundred people is a lot of people. Well, to that me. you're responsible yeah. for. Yeah, them. yeah, like, you feel responsible yeah, for them. You yeah. Well, you, they're you're creating opportunity for them to make money, but you're also actually physically paying them. But even if it was three yeah. people or or yeah. five people yeah. or 150 people, like that's yeah. still th- those are still numbers of consequence. Yeah. Totally. And it's kind of like, I guess the devil's advocate would be, well, why didn't you guys just pay $500 a month? And you gotta... well, sure. Thanks, bud. From from yeah. where? Where, yeah. where are we going to get an extra no, $500 I, I know, a month I know, because you're from, still right? managing. And I guess this is the thing is the, and again, go back to the squid game, which I don't know. <laughs> Jesus, that's so dark. It's very dark. <laughs> but it's literally like you get, you get, got the SIBA loan. You're navigating pivoting. You're needing pl- plastic. You're not needing plastic. You're closed. You're open. You're not. You're permanently closed you're not closed you're open you're allowed to be like you're just navigating all this stuff so the idea that you would well even that it would be good business sense to pay it back before you had to it's not because you never know what's coming tomorrow right? yeah okay i did that <laughs> i did that. okay off the island okay, man. Uh, but it, it was a huge mis- it's you. a mistake no well, because yeah, but i'm sitting here yeah, yeah. with a, a cash flow issue. I'm yeah. sitting here with the numbers yeah. not being where I thought yeah. they were. I was like, yeah. I don't know, this is where yeah, I, I, I should this be. I'm game. off the island because I yeah. feel like I should call them at the table in shame. Yeah. Of like, I should have. I feel like I should have been more conservative. Yeah, and I sh- I should have just been like, I'm just gonna just gonna keep holding on to this instead yeah. of being like, hey, I've got the money. I can pay that back, and then I don't have that worry. Yeah. I almost wish I still had that worry. I had yeah. a really uh, nice conversation with uh, about a loan recently um with the bdc yeah. and the the comment was <laughs> i took this as a total feel-good moment so it may not have this is yeah. my interpretation of yeah. the comment though which was <laughs> hey if you look at the length of those some loans some of the intention of the loans um you paid them back early and so really you you could th- theoretically have still been in repayment and if you had been you probably wouldn't be so tight right now yeah Right. And I was yeah. like, oh, it's so lovely. Are you spinning? Am I just, I'm just going to suck that up for what yeah. that is. Yeah. But I did. I, 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 mm hmm. Not did. a good move. Mm. Well, and this is the thing. And, you know, like somebody you be, can't win. That's you can't win like. because if you don't pay it back, people are like, well, why didn't you pay it back sooner? Well, walk in our shoes for the last three or four years and have any clue what's happening tomorrow. The idea if you have cash in your bank, it's, and you're like, oh, wow, that's good. That's very short-lived, very I find. Very short-lived. And then you're like, oh, okay, this came up, or this broke, or that broke, or this. Oh. N- n- like, yesterday at Bridge Street, they replaced a major piece of, of our walk-in. Yeah. Like, yeah. Five grand. Happens every it day. was five grand. Yeah. Five, well, it's yeah, I don't even need to, <laughs> yeah. I don't even need to know how much I can tell you. I, would, <laughs> I could probably actually write the invoice right now. Five grand. <laughs> <laughs> right? If anything goes down, it's five grand. At least yeah. it's five yeah. grand. Oh, the yeah. new number that my team keeps saying to me is, like, I'm like, it's five grand. They're like, it's the eight. Eight is the new five. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, let go. Oh, yeah. So I was like, no, we're going, I'm sticking with five yeah, on this one. I really need we'll, to be able to sleep at night for five. Yeah. So. Then but that's exactly it. The, and this is the thing that, so now as we're approaching, and I think my mom, who's our bookkeeper, 
and she bless her heart. She sent me a text when the government announced it was extended to the next year. You have another year to repay the Zebra loan. And I'm like, yay. And then I read the actual news and I'm like, mom, they put it to like January 18th or 20th or something. They put it back like 20 days. Yeah. Like it's not a year. It's like, oh, shoot. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, shoot. Shoot. Because it doesn't really change anything, you know? And I guess, again, talking about hope is not a plan. Like I'm hoping the government kind of gives us some relief. And like, this is what a great way to, you know, pump some juice back into the the economy or well, for a small yeah. business. Mm-hmm. Well, I, it's just I, forgive the stupid thing. I, I I'd like to make that the argument that they should all be forgiven. Yeah. Well, you give us the sales pitch. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, well, hopefully yeah. somebody in the power. There there are lots of reasons why if you forgive this loan, it's beneficial. Their economic recovery. I mean, think about all that money is now just free flowing into the economy again. Uh, that's not having to be sucked back out and given back to the government. Um, the preservation of small businesses. I mean, we're yeah. going to preserve a lot of small businesses. If we had to pay that back today and, well, I I, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't but pay it back today, right? But it's the 30% tax. Like, this is the thing is like the idea because people say, well, you can just pay it. I think it's like a four-year or three-year It's a three-year thing at 5% right? and or and whatever. 5%, and 5%, which is relatively okay interest in this market. Right. But you're having to pay a third, like you're penalized a third. Yeah. So as much as that forgiveness is an, indu- an incentive to pay it, like now I'm like, I can't even, I can't even fathom the idea of paying that well the so Canadian I'm government ro- rob a bank no i'm not yeah no <laughs> don't 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 the, not not like, without I'm not gonna me. Rob a bank. um the canadian government from 1980 to nine to 2009 i know this is kind of historical but gave away did you look this up or did chat gpt look this up i looked this okay, up okay, this okay, comes okay. from <laughs> a, this comes from a solid okay. source okay so uh, we'll listen then 600 <laughs> not, not like last one where we're just making shit up all <laughs> exactly. the time exactly Oh, you can put the bleep in there. Um, <laughs> he spent $683.9 billion for corporate, large corporations, giving them loans and grants um, to help, help, help subsidize their industries. These industries are oil and gas, aviation, high-tech stuff. Um, if you're a look at, in that time frame, all that money, 38% of it went to the same 10 companies over and over again. Wow. So wow. so thirty eight percent of six hundred and call it forty billion dollars went to ten companies, over half of which aren't Canadian owned. Nice. Um and anymore. We, they might have started out Canadian owned. Yeah, yeah, yeah possibly, yeah. but aren't anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um two of which are now went through went through bankruptcy and are no longer there. So that money was wasted. Um, yeah, all the jobs. Yeah, gone all, all the jobs gone. Yeah. Um, the the part of that industry gone as well, and um, and most of those top ten corporations were cash positive and didn't need the help when yeah. they got it. Yeah. So, so when you when you compare those staggering numbers and that giveaway, the free flow giveaway to bigger corporations, um, why can we not support small companies? And there, there'd have to be some kind of cutoff, like, and I don't know what it is, somewhere above us. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say somewhere above my level. I was going to say somewhere above my level, but I realize I'm not the only person in the room. <laughs> so if we make, make the cut above us, um, I mean, we are the ones providing jobs in the community. We are the ones providing um, food and entertainment for the people in our communities. Yeah. And and we're the ones paying taxes. You know, the big corporations, those top 10 that got all that those those supplements? Yeah. You think they're paying their fair share of taxes at the same time? No. I no, don't, no, I, I don't have the stats yeah. on that, but I reckon. See, we're now making up stats, now, which is great. No, now, <laughs> now, now, now we're going off uh, the, yeah. the ledge. But, I mean, you look at big corporations not paying their fair uh, share of taxes, sucking up all this Canadian taxpayer money for nothing because they don't need it. They just want it, and the government's happy to provide it, evidently. And then when when we really need something, we're in a real crisis. The world, our nation is in a real crisis. We get 
$49 billion, I think, Canada. Yeah, $49 billion went out to small businesses. Is that how much it was? Yeah. I was wondering that. Yeah. And that, I was going to make something that, up. That's a fact. So now yeah. I don't have to. Uh, no, no, we don't have to. $49 billion, That's That's 10% of that other number, yeah. right? Yeah. And so okay. that's going to actually to most of that, it's going to people who need it. Not all of it. So some of it was squandered and taken and sure. whatever. But you can picture most of that going to folks like us yeah, who are trying to keep afloat, keep our cash flow positive. The only reason I took that loan, same reason you did, Marianne. I was scared. I needed some 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 support. Like, And I knew that this money wasn't going to support me through the problem. But I was going to take it because who knew what was going to happen next, right? That wasn't the only thing that we took. You, t- I took anything and everything. I, yeah, I was yeah. Like, we, yeah. we scrambled and and t- tried to apply for all kinds of anything that even looked like it could maybe that we could maybe get it, mm-hmm. and it didn't even matter if it was like five thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand. Any amount that we could get, we took because we didn't know how long it was going to last. We wanted to make sure that we could take care of our team, like. Yeah. And there were there were grants. I I took a grant for seventy, or maybe it was it was close to ten thousand dollars for for technology upgrades. Mm-hmm. Which yep. at the time yeah. is like, oh, get online, do all my online yeah. Li- yeah. Uh, online stuff because that's where the future was said it was going. Well, in order to use that grant, you had to go to a certified company, mm-hmm. and they took half of it right away to redo a website. And I'm not the only one. I had a perfectly good website. Yeah. And the first thing they, oh, we're going to need to spend five to seven thousand dollars just to redo your website. And I talked to so many people mm-hmm. who had the same thing happen. Yeah. All these little companies just sucked up that grant money, and I got no benefit. My online presence is no better now than, than it, was it was before. Same here. And I and it was just wasted money. Yeah. I mean, when when it comes to repaying money that I feel. I, I, I feel like, A, we needed it, but we didn't really need it. Like, if we'd never got that and we had other supports, like forgiveness from from suppliers and, and payroll help, maybe, like specifically payroll help, um, I don't see why we should pay this back when... Well, okay, the, let me ask a question. Okay. So if the... Or make a statement. I think that if the... the so we're, we're in a climate emergency, right? So... They say it's a climate emergency. They're taking all these carbon taxes. They just go into this big pool and the odd person, I guess, gets the money back. I've never seen any money back. Yeah. So there's just it's basically tax more tax grab. So would you guys be incentivized if they said you don't have to pay the loan back if you become carbon neutral within six months? Like if you put in a carbon neutrality plan, you go compost, you you know, and again, you're gonna probably have to hire somebody to audit it, or the government would have to audit, it, or you'd have to verify that you're doing, it, or you're paying carbon credits, or if you're the industry average um, says that your your carbon emissions are 400 tons a year, so you offset your carbons to the tune of 400 tons, or show us that you're carbon neutral, we won't make you pay it back. All of a sudden, now you have all these small businesses that are incentivized to become carbon neutral, That's where a good you can incentive. actually take that money that it was real money, dollars, and do something positive. How about that idea? I like that. Yeah, I it's do that. good. It, yeah. It, it's yeah. an incentive. I I, I don't want to pay a carbon tax. It might cost three grand a year, or four uh, grand ever. a year, five grand a year, or something like that. It, you know, ten grand a year. <laughs> well, it depends on how you look at it because if you're a wood burning pizzeria, it's not so great. No, was, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. True. <laughs> there were all, all, all of the, the other one things. person that like paid the... off her SIBO <laughs> loan early, <laughs> right. Right. and now she can get rewarded because. <laughs> She can't afford to do the carbon neutrality because of the wood burning. Yeah. Oh my god. But all of the other things we it. did, right? We yeah. composted. We yeah. like all the products yeah. that we're buying, I mean, all the things. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. all that consciousness. Yeah. It's the wood burning that gets me. But yeah. But all of those other pieces are, are in play. Have yeah. been in play because yeah. that just seems good business practice. Yeah, totally. Just like it. That's that's exactly where you lead from. I mean, yeah. it's a, it's a combination of that heart and head. I think. Right. Yeah. You're, that's right. You're you're leading because you know it's the right thing to do. It's the good when thing I to think, do. When I think. That's a great word. It's heart and head for the government. Like, you know, you knew you had to do something and this is what you chose. Now you've got to lead with your heart, but you can also lead with your brain and say, okay, well, what can we do here that could turn something rather than just Uh, saying, I forgive it. Why don't you give us an incentive? Why don't you do, use it as an opportunity uh, as to an opportunity to incentivize? Absolutely. Right? Well, yeah, it, well, yeah. That makes it, sense. It, it, it gives you an opportunity to give some positive investment back into yeah. the country. Right? In real, well, in yeah. real, I mean, 
they talk about us not hitting our targets. And the idea of this, these Canadian, like countrywide targets, obviously, if everybody's working to the same end goal, great. Mm-hmm. But not everybody's doing that. Like we're basically burying ourselves, in my opinion. And I've had a carbon neutral business since 2012. And I'm all about it, and I agree there's a climate emergency and I, all that stuff, but do I think taxing the heck out of us is the way to do it, to fix it? No, I don't think it does anything. And the big thing is you've got other countries that are doing nothing. I mean, yeah. one volcano wipes out pretty much everything that we've done, you yeah. know, and that's totally out of our control. It's out of our control what China does, what U.S. does, what any of these other countries do at all. And that we're sitting here going, we've got to be the leaders of like, yeah. I don't know. I, I think, think we already way. are. I, I think, well, I mean, I speak in our little group here. We're all really conscious people. Or the businesses involved in the Bread and Butter Collective are all really conscious. And even if we don't, we don't have a carbon neutral sticker on our window, most of us are oh, doing, doing 90% of what we need to do. And l- let me get this right? straight. Like, I'm not a fan, like, the certification, and it's the same thing with or, or, organic right? farming yeah. and things like this. Like, oh, well, I'm going to pay. It's even, like, we're basically a triple bottom line business, and there's a B Corp status you can get. So there's an organization that audits it, and you could jump through these hoops to get this B Corp thing. We are a B Corp by every standard you can have, but... It's probably going to cost 20, 30, 40, 50. I don't even know how much it's going to cost to get this it's status. Significant. It's significant. And you're like, I would love to say that because I'd love to use it as inspiration. But it's the same thing with carbon neutral. So you're going to have to pay all this money to get the sticker when most, a lot of businesses, I mean, if you offset, like I think we offset, I don't know, it's maybe six grand a year costs us to offset our carbon that we we produce. Um, and so that's not a big number. Right. But in order for you to get that certification, you do have to spend all that other money. Right. Right. So, but it's such a low hanging fruit to me that if they were really serious about a climate emergency, really wanted to help small business get there, Mm -hmm. this is a golden opportunity to, to have that happen. Like within a year or two, you can have all these businesses doing more than they've been doing, um, and be carbon neutral and you can actually inspire others in a, in a different part of my life, I was in a different session and the thing that, that connects for me is talking about um, that money is a tool. Yes. Money is a tool. Yeah. And so yeah. use use it as a tool. Yeah. Use it as a tool to get the behavior that you want. If there's a climate emergency and needs to yeah. be action, the, the tax only goes so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Well, it doesn't because the, t- the thing about the tax, if they were taking that tax and investing in innovation and subsidizing companies that were going green or working with the oil and gas companies to green faster or whatever, that'd be one thing. But they're basically, they're just giving it, they say they're just giving it back to people. So it's used as a stick. So if things are getting more costly, you're going to do something different. But why not, not use it as a behavioral change? Well, I, like that's that's the opportunity, right? Hundred percent. Use that. Yeah. Use that as the opportunity. To take that that money collected by the tax yeah. and do something really innovative and really impactful with yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. Turn the stick into a carrot. Yeah. yeah it, it, that's the thing. Is the carrot sticks never work? And unfortunately, when you're in a in a first world country where we're all prosperous for the most part. I mean, that doesn't speak to everybody and even ourselves. Like mm-hmm. the, the idea that we're successful, I think we're all feel successful. But when we're looking at our bank account and we're looking <laughs> at how we're running our business, we're like, oh my God, is this what success looks well, like? Great. But globally, we're all in the 1%. No, I right. agree yeah. for sure when you look at all of that stuff. But how much effort is, I don't even think about like the gas I I just do it because I need it to get to where I'm going. Like there is no decision making that I haven't already done. Like I'm not being encouraged to do anything different. And I think, you know, when people think of the paying the tax, well, I'm, it's a crutch. They're like, Oh, well I'm paying this extra carbon tax. We're as a country where you got a carbon tax is look at us. We're so great. I'm like, do you not see that you're not doing anything? Right. You know, because we can afford to pay the extra tax. Like it's we're just paying extra tax for nothing. Well, and and, and that, anyway. but that, you could, that but it could means, be inspirational. It yeah. could be, and this is where it, it, it could yes. be inspirational. Yes. If, if That's it's the a part. large and corporation, and you can change behavior, and then people yeah. have that the whole buy-in to the whole process and the pride and what a, in the, what an in opportunity the, for the the government of Canada to do that. So how are you going to tell them about it? I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm not off Twitter <laughs> now, but or X <laughs> or whatever. But I'll go. I'm gonna log back in and I'm gonna go to Trudeau. I'll just message him. And but oh, I, you don't think he's on True Social? 
Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, true social. Oh, Jesus. No. I'm on threads now. Maybe yeah. I'll message well, him on maybe, threads. Maybe he's on threads. Yeah. So that's actually good. Yeah. I'm just going to message him. So that'll you can always email your MP <laughs> you or see, MLA. You might be able to see my eye rolls in the back of my head. <laughs> that was yeah. so good. I'm just going to message him and I'll fix yeah. it. Yeah. Boom, Boom, done. Done. Boom. Done. done. Okay. End of discussion. Yeah. That's so great. So on a more positive note, obviously, what – like, are you seeing anything in your business that is positive? Is there stuff that's exciting? Is there, yeah. So you start, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wanted to go last. Um, Marianne, start. Uh, positive. Um, well, here. I'm no, sorry. I've got, I've, got a, I've got a positive. Okay. Still love what we do at the end of the day. Still, oh. then that was the hardest part for us. I think. Um, I think for all of us about. Um, the, the closures and the challenges of lockdown, which is that we're hospitality. And I remember reading all kinds of different stuff. Like I remember um, Vic and Vidge talking about, it's all great that we've put together these to-go packages and we can yeah. lob you off. But at the end of the day, it's about these dining rooms that we have. It's about this experience that we want to provide yeah. to our community. And that's what the tie-in is. And, and I'm happy to say that that's still pretty magical for me. Now that's you've done still... a really great job on your, your to-go stuff, by the way. Mm -hmm. Like that's, yeah, yeah, and that's a, it's an interesting. Yeah. At some point, there needs to yeah. probably be some serious analysis. Like, yeah. we need to like put it through the put put it through the process and say like, is this really still? Does this still feel good? Does this still? Yeah. Is this still working financially? Is this yeah. still where I want to be? Um, and it was an opportunity to to we talked about frozen pizza for years and years, yeah. and we finally pulled it together and and looking at that marketplace and where that could go or not go. But at the end of the day, it was always for us about creating a dining room where people came yeah, and right. came together and, and ate Broke great bread. Yeah. 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 That was what it was about for us. And that still is what feels really good. That's nice. Um, <laughs> that's that's nice. nice, dear. You just stole mine. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is. That part's nice. There's a lot of other stuff, though, that's not nice. <laughs> right? Oh, my goodness. Um, positivity for the first time in a very long time. We have the best team in place. Um, it took me a very long time to try and figure out how to get a really good solid team in place um, to the point where I can sleep at night, turn my phone off, um, not look at it every two minutes. And uh, the foreign worker program has been really successful for me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you, you did. You went through hell. You went through employee hell. Employee hell. Yeah, yeah, we're, you know, we'd be sitting in a bread and butter meeting and I'm like, sorry, guys, I got to go. Well. I got to put an apron on and I got to get in the kitchen and make sandwiches, you know, and I don't mind doing that. I don't mind showing my team that I can do all the things they can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm there as a team player as well. But then what happens to my accounting and payroll? <laughs> like, I, I can't get well, to all, all the other things. Other hats you wear, right? Yeah. right. Yeah. So it's just been really refreshing the last, I'd say, five months of having some solid team players. And they're from everywhere, all over the world, Serbia, Bosnia, um, Mexico, um, Trinidad. Oh. And and they're wanting to be in Canada and they're wanting to work hard. And two yeah. of them have kids overseas. Um, one of one of his, his name's Dino, he's in Bosnia right now and he hasn't seen his children, four children in two years. Oh my, oh God. my goodness. Yeah. So wow. Wow. I encourage anyone and everyone to try and get through this you know, it's a bit of paperwork. It's a bit of investment, but it, it really has worked for me. Yeah, that's, that's funny. We that's we great. did that at Zabri's and they showed up for one shift. They quit. And, you know, four or five grand later. And it, yeah. th listen, that's just one one story. And yeah. so the person had no intention of doing They were just trying to get here and then they, they quit. But I I know of tons of, and this is kind of the the challenge when you're thinking of, you know, the country and you know immigration and workers here and all that stuff but when you actually have workers that show up on time really care mm -hmm. have a purpose because you know their your business is not necessarily their purpose but your business is going to help them achieve their purpose yeah and i think that is kind of the missing link mm -hmm. in the employees that are in the market these days and i'm going to say domestic employees yeah you know for the most part because there is no connection to it used to be about resume building and career building, and they had that mission. And but in the monks, and I think part of the contributor to all that is just the negativity in the world, and 
everybody's catastrophizing everything. And when you really get down to the brass tacks of it, which, which most people care about, their immediate family, you know, what they're going to do today, what they're going to do tomorrow. And this is about living in the moment too mm -hmm. and not worrying about, because that worry can just, you know, how do you go to work and think of your future when you're, oh, there will be no future. Like it's yeah. such a horrible thing to do to people. Um, and I think it's rubbing off on the employees domestically. But yeah, you have these people and they make huge sacrifices. They're leaving their family yeah. and friends and, and yeah. So, I mean, we probably have three or four that have come over on the LMI program and they're, incredible yeah and, they're, and, they're, and their resumes are stacked yeah they have more experience yeah. than us in the room like you know and um yeah. so that's that's a yeah. positive but anecdotally that's, that's, i've that's heard the same thing and i've investment. heard really like just really positive and that yeah. that that wanting right yeah uh and caring is there yeah and that that it really supports and uplifts your culture so mm -hmm. that the, those those that you're struggling with on yeah. that getting that match are brought up by yes. the yeah, those that and really learning want it from and get them. Well, yeah, that's, from that's them. yeah, that it couldn't have said it any better. Is having those people that can set the example mm -hmm. and lead the way. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of lessons that can be learned, you know, cross culturally and yes. all of those things. So good, and it just makes the workplace a little bit more uh, dynamic and and deep. Yeah, you know, and I think that's. Yeah, I think the, well, the secret sauce for me is that I find the foreign workers that are already here. Yeah, so yeah. I don't I don't need to wait and bring them over. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, we, we waited a year and a yeah, half. Yeah, no. showed up for one shift. Yeah. Wow, no, you, you could have called me. I've always wanted to drop it. Yeah, <laughs> it's not with a filled in. <laughs> no, my, my kid beat me to it. <laughs> my my call to action when I'm looking for them is, you have to already be here. Mm. Yeah. And then I'll and and we're certified and we're willing to do all the paperwork and pay for it. Yeah. Well, when you when you when you bring in a foreign worker who's already here, are you taking them from another job that maybe they're realizing that there's better jobs like I yours. I do have a story. Yes. So um, I had an interview. He currently works for me now. His name is Omar, and he was working at A and W, and he was brought into A and W on an LMIA. So he had that paperwork, and he quickly realized that that's just not the job for him. He wanted something more. Um, so I looked into it because I didn't know anything about it. And you can apply for an additional LMIA with another company um, at the same time as holding this other this paperwork with A and W. And so I did it, and I did the paperwork, and then he chose to leave A and W and work for me. But you've you've got to have your paperwork in yes. order for Omar to come work for yes. you. Yeah, you've yeah. got to be registered. We're yeah. going through that right now with somebody as well. The same scenario because we had LMIA with Zambries, but we didn't with Big Will. Mm. Um, we hired employees that were on other LMIAs that left and were able to leave and yeah. come over. But we're taking over the paperwork on on this one person's LMIA. So if you don't have the paperwork, can you just pay them cash or just let them run off tips? Can you do that? Isn't that bro, called like stop bro. Sam things? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> like, we're like, I'm testing you all. I'm testing <laughs> you all. Yes. We're oh. asking the government to oh, yeah, forgive SIBA loans and so, 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 out, so, right? yeah, can, yeah. so we can hire foreign workers? Yeah. So for you, okay. Cash? <laughs> As we're yes. wrapping up, you okay. need to say your positive. My positives. Well, I think, um, Ending 2023, moving into 2024, I'm working on collaborations with people. Um, I've got one with you, yeah. which you is great. Yeah. Um, I've got I've got a couple other really got a neat collaboration, that, we're collaboration that I think is going to just just make me feel better, move my product to places where it wasn't before, yeah. and help other people do do the same thing. I mean, when I'm collaborating with, with people, there's no no contracts. No, it's just based on the handshake, like, we want to make this work. Like, I'm doing this pumpkin spice thing with Millstone Organics. And they're, they're a phenomenal company that I want to be part of. Um, and we're just trading back and forth the products until it gets to a completed product that we can both sell independently and it doesn't cost us much because we're yeah. helping each other. And yeah. so I, I think for me coming out of the pandemic, which was shattering, it shattered my business in so many ways. I opened and closed so many stores throughout the pandemic that I've lost track of how many <laughs> it was. And my business model has gone completely upside down and almost back around but I, I, I see that, that, you know, in order to really prosper and feel good about what I'm doing, I need to do it with other people that I really like mm -hmm. and that I want to work with. And I won't, I won't work with people I 
don't feel good about anymore. And to me, that's the most positive thing that's come out of the pandemic for me is my ability to choose who I want to work with has gotten so much more strict. And that includes who I want to lease a property from and who I want to sell my product to. I love it. So that's yeah. my positive is being just, wow, just hold, really holding myself up more mm -hmm. and my business up more and working with people that I just truly, really like. Kaylin, it's, it's your turn. Well, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I was saying Kaylin because you're the only one Weepy. left to say a positive. Oh yeah. Well, I wasn't. I, I now I gotta say the most positive man. experience is the fact that I'm working doing some collaboration with Sam. Right, milkshakes are the most positive yeah, thing in the world. I would agree with a lot of what you said. Like the the collaboration, obviously the bread and butter collective itself is just having that network of people that don't view we're not we don't view each other as competition. We view each other as collaborators. And I think that, you know, getting to how we're gonna solve some of these problems, but also decrease our stress is through collaboration, through not looking at people as um, an enemy or somebody that, you know, is gonna, we're competing for the same dollar. And, and in some ways we are, but we're so much stronger for our, our collaboration and doing those, um, more of those types of things is kind of what keeps my juice jamming. And even doing the collaboration that we did with the, that we'll continue to do because we're going to add it to our menu um, with the coffee shake. Um, we've got Island Pepper Co. Um, hot sauce, which is like incredible hot sauce. It's like pretty if you're dynamite. buying Red Hot, yeah. just kick it and buy a local company. He's, I'll share his, okay. yeah, he's, Island it's Pepper awesome. Man. Like, and he does, yeah, he's really, really good. So these type of, and these are all local companies and collaborators and how good is it to expand there so and obviously you know dealing with um challenges is is both you know challenging but also the opportunity of trying to do things a little bit different i think is kind of cool so i like it even though it's a little bit scary sometimes you're wondering and you know we're struggling in an animal store but we have such good people up there so remembering like even in the midst of struggle looking for the silver lining, I think is, is kind of what's keeping me going. And uh, yeah, those collaborations. Wow. So, well, keep positive. Yeah. And we're literally collaborating. <laughs> like you and I yeah. are working on stuff together, yeah. Marianne, and Kristen's going to sell us gelato. And, and <laughs> her team's going to go, what? <laughs> From your lips to God. I do think that, yeah, like there's lots of, there's lots of things to be um, thankful for. Um, we're in between since we've spent time in America, we're in between the Canadian Thanksgiving and the American Thanksgiving in my house. So mm -hmm. we're still thinking of things to be thankful for. But but without a doubt, the the collaboration that happens through Red and Brother, like knowing that, that I told you this already, yeah. that I was in a, um, I was speaking to a class at Camosun, an entrepreneur class at Camosun, and they were asking like, how, like, who do you talk to? Who are your peers? And I was like, it's amazing to me that I can pick up the phone and yeah. text Kaylin or I can text Marianne or I can text, not only will I show up and drink wine with Marianne, <laughs> yeah. but you'll be like, no, you need to talk to this person. And no, yeah. okay, wait, let me help you with that. And, and it, and it, works full it's all the way around mm -hmm. yeah. of truly how can we help each other and you 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 need that yeah well it's a different way of doing business because we never had any I mean, we all knew each other and mm -hmm. yeah. we'd have little intersections yeah. and whatever but it was never in a way that it was organic and transparent and all of that stuff and we're always yes. holding no something i think back. always yeah. i think yeah. that's completely true and yeah. now it's more like i need help and i know you yeah. can help me and and that yeah. transparency yeah yeah Come at the it. table and say, I paid off the phone. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm like, okay, well, too, yeah, after, we, after we all know session, who our sugar gonna, mama yeah, is, right? Exactly. <laughs> we're like, oh, like, uh, <laughs> tell me more. Uh, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, that's so <laughs> great. Paying off your loans yeah. early, are you? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> just signed my life away on a different type of loan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. exactly. Um, good. Well, I think we should do this once a month, honestly. Like, so let's try to do this more regularly. Thank you. Thanks very, for thinking of us. What's yeah. very indicative of what we do in our in our bread and butter collective meetings too, where we talk about this stuff mm -hmm. and have these types of conversations. So yeah. Let's do this again. When month, one month's time, we're going to do it again. Okay. Oh, ho, ho, ho. All right. I'm in. Whoa. Sounds great. No, I was, like, I was like, whoa, ho, ho. I thought, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like Christmas coming. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ho, All right. ho, ho. This is awesome. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thanks for listening. Yeah. And we'll talk we'll see you. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Be real. Nice, everybody. Be kind. Will do. Cheers. Bye. Bread and Butter Collective's membership includes the following local businesses. 2% Jazz, Bunny's Kitchen, Buzz Coffee House, Eagleite, Big Wheel Burger, Blue Mountain Solutions, Bodega Tapas Wine Bar, Eva Schnitzel House, Farmsgate Foods and Catering, Victoria Chocolate and Company, Drum Roaster Coffee, Habit Coffee, Foo Asian Street Food, The Culinary Arts Program at Camosun, Cafe Fantastico, Fall Epi, Harold Street Brew Works, Hey Happy, House of Botang, Nike Ramen Ya, Jenny Marie's Cracker Company, La Pasta, La Rue Patisserie, Mocha House, Part and Parcel, Poco a Pinto Bar, Pizzeria Prima Strada, Keating Pizza, Roast, Table 9 Consulting, Sherwood Cafe and Bar, Sweets by Selena, The Collective Wine Bar and Kitchen, The Drake, Tapa Bar, The Nimble Bar Company, Ruth and Dean, The Whole Beast, The Weenery, Spoons Diner, Truffles Inspired Catering, and Zambri's. To hear more from the Bread and Butter Collective, go to checknews.ca slash podcasts on Check Plus or find us on your favorite podcasting platform.